you know, that takes us on to the next one. We got a bantamweight bout between another, you know, a couple exciting people we've been looking forward to. This was supposed to happen uh, a while back as well, I believe in mm -hmm. December, but uh, alas, you know, COVID hit the Canadian boy in Zahavi. And so we got it, you know, upcoming this weekend, we got Draco Rodriguez and Iman Zahavi, or a nice boy out of Montreal here. So we're going to have to try and remove some of that beaver bias. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Draco, and another dude that highlights our uh, our February prospect videos. Mm -hmm. We're obviously looking forward to this guy. I believe he was at number two on this one. Correct. And we were saying how it was so interchangeable between the two of them, Draco and mm -hmm. Fahaz. But the funny part about that is it's just their point is kind of switched around a little bit, right? Like we kind of had that based on Dimava being a tougher fight to kind of get out of. But if he does get out of that fight looking real good, it's probably a much bigger leapfrog, if you will. But we just thought, you know, Rodriguez had a much better chance and it really lined up for him yes. because, you know, we talked about Zahabi a little bit. So even in terms of like diving too much, right? Brother of famed head coach at TriStar, you know, Faraz Zahabi, GSP's head coach. Like he has a lot on uh, riding on his shoulders, right? He has a name to live up to, let's be real. And, you know, mm -hmm. he was very open about what he, how he feels about the way he enters the octagon, you know? Ironically enough, a guy like GSP was so mentally tough in there. He was saying how that's his weakest point, you know, and that's where a lot of those losses he felt were happening was he kind of felt like it mental lapses as an MMA fighter in the octagon. And I think that's where you kind of have to, you know, tell yourself, is that a massive, you know, flaw against the guy like Rodriguez, who his only loss is basically a King of the cage title fight, I believe. I mean, oh, wow. yeah, a bantamweight title fight against Tony Gravely. So that's where I think, like, you know, he's getting a good name to fight. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where we're going to see a good mix up here of, you know, what can actually happen. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, like he touched on, Draco has one loss in his career, seven and one record. Mm -hmm. You know, very nice, highly rated prospect that we're looking forward to. And, and, you know, Zahabi, he actually made his UFC debut back in 2017. So he, he actually has been around for a while. Uh, you know, he had a decision win against Reginaldo Vieira then. And since then, you know, he's only fought twice, both of them being losses to Ricardo Ramos on the GSP card that you had mentioned. So, mm -hmm. you know, GSP had had a look at that firsthand. Uh, and then, you know, Vincent Morales in decision as well. So this is going to be a tough one for our Canadian boy, but... Uh, you know, how do you see this one kind of playing out before we dive right into the lines here? Mm -hmm. and, and you touched on it, right, man? Like, imagine being this guy's brother and kind of, you know, trying your best to get him to do his thing and having that happen against Ramos and then going into the Bisping fight and then just beating Bisping for that middleweight. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> I, I can't even, you know, GSP is GSP. He gets, he gets, he gets what he gets <laughs> sometimes. It's kind of crazy. But, I mean, it, it's one of those things, right? Like, you, you can... You can really kind of teach teach someone as much as possible, but it really comes down to kind of how they take that information in, right? So the cool thing I like about Zahabi is that he's really addressed what he thinks is the main issue here. And he's got a, a brother who, you know, if you've listened to Zahabi, especially on his Joe Rogan podcast episodes, like that is a man who takes the mental game of anything very seriously. Like he is mm -hmm. all about mental toughness and understanding how to attack different levels of the brain. And even the way he processes information, it, it just seems very different than, you know, the average person. So I think he's in good hands. It's just like, it's the way we kind of talked about Connor back in the day, right? Like when you're going into fourth and fifth rounds, you know, you can train for something, but at the end of the day, when you're in that moment, there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that happen to you mentally, physically, you know, yeah. spiritually, if that's something that, that really affects you as a person, like all of that comes into play where all of a sudden, you know, adrenaline dump, you know, uh, empty gas tank, or even let's be honest, yeah. a second wind, you know, a second like wind. How, is something how, how sharp moment. really is your mental mm -hmm. focus at those times or, or it might be at its peak, right? Given mm -hmm. how the fight is actually unfolding. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, let's let's dive right into the lines here. I, I think you know who the favorite is here. So give me a number, man. Yeah, so Let, I let's think get we my kind boy from the showcase showdown. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, 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 look, I, I think because we've already done this fight, we want to do it quickly. Like we did touch on a line before. And again, like it, it's not like I can remember it for sure. But and I don't go back to notes or anything like that because we kind of know these fighters. So I am still going to stick with 
the what I believe the original line could be. And I'm going to go with something like minus 225. I think Draco is probably going to roll with that Vegas roll. Ooh, that you know, I, on a repeat fight, I normally would not give you a showcase showdown here, mm -hmm. but this one warrants it. Let's give this guy a hand. What happened? Where's my we got boy? It. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? <laughs> so, you know, the reason I give this one to you is that the original line when we first previewed this fight was minus 180. Mm -hmm. Looking at it now, it is minus 220, which is right yeah. in line with your new line. Yeah. So yeah. Very impressive there. Thank you, sir. And, and it comes from the way we discussed it, right? Like The way, let's be real, the way you kind of take in what I'm saying in my movement and, and kind of make a call, it's very similar to the way, I guess, Vegas would, would process the general information too, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's be real. I don't think we left that fight the first time it was booked being like, oh, wait, may maybe we weren't so sure about Rodriguez as, you know, a big prospect coming into yeah. know, I think if anything, he earned himself a bit more points without even having to step in there yet, you know? Whereas, like, if you were a big believer in Zahavi being able to maybe come in there and mix it up, because I think if you can get into the later rounds, you know, and, and start to really show that next level of MMA, like tire the guy out, get his power punches away from him, you know, he's going to be tricky. But, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you can if you can keep that like gas tank and keep that like wits, you know, throughout the whole fight, you know, you can really pu pull something out. And I think that's where Vegas might not believe so much. But again, like the, the, there's levels to it. And I think he has the right people behind him to help him get there. For sure. So, you know, stay tuned for that one. I do believe, you know, the, the lean here is on, uh, on Rodriguez here, but you know, if, if anything changes, we see value on Sahabi, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, we'll be sure to let you guys know and post it mm -hmm. on Instagram. I think right now that would, might be one of our more comfortable picks. I think if you were mm -hmm. pretty much honest with yourself, I think you would say, you know, if nothing changed, if you had to go into this, you know, gun to your head kind of thing, you know, even at that line in, increase, I don't even, I don't, I don't know if yeah. you bat an eye personally, right? Nope, nope. That would uh, definitely be included in some parlays for me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, safe to say we are pumped for this one. UFC mm -hmm. Vegas 19 takes place next Saturday, headlined by our boy, the Black Beast, taking on Curtis Blades. We got a bunch of beauty heavyweight fights on that card, mm -hmm. so I'm super pumped for it. You know, that wraps it up today. If you mm -hmm. haven't already done so, smash that like button, give hit that bell button, give us that subscribe, the follow, all That's our Instagram, baby. Twitter is all there. Any questions, comments you guys have, just send them our way. Anything else, Siraj? I mean, you know, just be ready. Like, we keep pumping this fight up, but be ready for a five-round wrestling match where Curtis Blades isn't able to finish this man and Derek Lewis isn't able to get off his back after three rounds, and you're just watching a guy get taken down for, for five rounds. So just be ready for that as well. <laughs> yeah. Nice little disclaimer there, my man. Yeah. Always a pleasure, dude. Take care. You too, my guy. Take care.